guys, we are going to continue the fun uh, in lesson six. I don't know if you can see the update. I'm getting an update message in my upper right hand corner. Um, I need to update my computer. Tell me something I don't know. Um, okay, lesson six, lesson six, Mrs. Calamaris. We are going to continue um, connecting our area model multiplication work with our standard algorithm multiplication work. I think you guys can see where this is going. One day very soon, we're going to take away the area model, keep it in our toolkit as a tool that you can use if that supports your learning, and then we're going to primarily focus on the standard algorithm. That day has not come yet. Today we are practicing both area model and standard algorithm. Um, the area model is a wonderful support for our learning. Please understand that. That helps us uh, have a deeper understanding of what is going on with multi-digit uh, multiplication. We end up with partial products. We add those pro uh, partial products together to have a final amazing product. Uh, and I am just so excited, as you can see, to get going here. So let's not wait any longer. Here we go. Uh, lesson six and uh, today is 10 thank you 2318 uh, please make sure you have this labeled in your math notebook l6 10 2318 and you can choose to do this problem or the next one okay so here we're going to be uh, we're going to draw an area model then solve using the standard algorithm use arrows to match the partial products from the area model which we'll draw over here to the partial product which we'll draw over here okay as you guys can see our numbers are becoming a little bit more complex uh, today in class when we were working on lesson five we were looking at some pretty manageable numbers now the numbers are getting larger uh, and with that you guys are probably predicting that our uh, area model and our standard algorithm is going to become a little bit more complex but don't worry it's nothing you can't handle with a little bit of practice so I'm going to decompose 48 into 40 and 8 this column is labeled 40 this column is labeled 8 next this is so so important I'm going to decompose 35 into 5 and 30. My tens um, place value are going to go on the bottom row and the ones are on the top row. They're just, this is so, so, so important. If we don't set it up like this with our tens in the bottom row and our ones in the top row, our partial products are not going to match up. So please be very careful with how you set up these area models. From here, we are going to go through and write our expressions and our partial products inside the rectangles. And I'll tell you why in a second. So our first expression here is going to be 5 multiplied by 40. First row, 5 is going to be multiplied uh, across 40 and 8. But our first row, that goes with this way, and our first column is going to the expression that will come from that is 5 times 40 is equal to some number. Let's set up our expressions first. Next, we're still in the first row, but now we're in the second column. 8 um, is labeled here on the second column. So we're looking at 5 times 8. That is the expression uh, in our first row, second column. Now let's go into our second row. First column. We're looking at 30 times this column is labeled with a 40 okay equals some number and then our final rectangle here we're still on the second row but now we're in the second column eight owns the second column so we are looking at 30 times eight equals some number Okay, so I have my four expressions. Now we need to go ahead and uh, evaluate these expressions so we can find the partial products. Well, 5 times 4 I know is 20, and we're going to bring 1, 0 along to the party. 5 times 40 is 200. Next expression, 5 times 8. Oh, I've got that one. It's 40. Now we're going to go to the second row here. 30 is the master of the second row. 3 times 4 is 12, but that's not a 3 times 4, it's a 30 times 40. We're going to bring along 1, 2 zeros to the party. 30 times 40 is 1,200. Finally, let's look at 30 times 8. Well, I know 3 times 8 is 24, and we're going to bring 1, 0 along to the party, because that's not a 3, it's a 30. 
So now, you guys, we have one, two, three, four partial products. Partial products because they're not the full products yet. What we need to do, friends, is add up what we have in each row. Here we have one row, two rows. So I need you to help me add 240. Well, 200 plus 40 is 240. Bingo. Let's look at 12. Now we need to add up the second row, and we're going to put that partial product here on the sign. We're going to look at 1200 plus 240. If you can't line that up in your head, it, there is absolutely no problem with doing this on scratch paper anywhere where you have room. 1200 plus 240. Do you guys see how I lined up all of my place values? 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. And then we have a 1. So 1200 plus 240 is 14. 40. Okay, now let's go ahead and do some standard algorithm work. 5 times 8 is 40. My 0 with a 4. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 4 is 24. Is this first partial product the same as this? Woohoo! Indeed, happy math life. Let's go ahead and go to our second uh, row or our second partial product. 30 times 8. Now we're going to be multiplying this 3 in. It's not a 3 though, it's in the tens place value, which means it's a 30. What is 30 times 8? Well, 30 times 8 is um, 240. So I have my 0, I have my 4. I used this. I'm going to scratch it out now. I'm going to bring up over my 2. 30 times 8 is, we can refer to this, 240. So I have a 0. I have my 4 in my tens place value, and then I'm going to carry my 2 on top. That's in the hundreds place value. Now let's look at 3 times 4. I mean 30 times 4. Well, 30, and actually this is not a 4, it's a 40, I can refer back here, is actually 1,200. Okay, very interesting. For now, since our place value is aligned and we're all good, let's think about 3 times 4, which is 12, and then add 2, which is 14. Let's go ahead and put our digits down and realize, wow, I am so, so clever. Even though 3 times 4 is 12 plus 2 is 14, you guys know that that's not 14 ones. We're actually in our hundreds and thousands place value now. Beautiful. So next question, is this second partial product the same as this uh, partial product from our second row? Again, woohoo, genius, love it. So we need a final product, you guys. In order to find our final product, we're going to add together our two partial products. Would you like to add them together here or here first? You know, since we did our area model first, let's go ahead and add them. Add the green numbers together. Add the green, uh, the two partial products. Um, these are not aligned very well, Mrs. Calamaris. Sorry, friends. I'm working on it. I just get so excited. I'm going to go ahead and line these up much more beautifully over here so I can make sure that I'm adding my ones with my ones, my tens with my tens, my hundreds with my hundreds, and my thousands with my thousands. Woo! So zero plus zero is zero. Four plus four, thank you, Dylan, is eight. Four plus two, thank you very much, Sebastian, six. And then one plus nothing. I appreciate that Ashwika is one. Okay, so 240 plus 1,440, according to our math, is 1,680. Let's see if we get the same number over here. Zero plus zero is zero. Four plus four, eight. Two plus four, thank you, Emma, six. One plus nothing, thank you very much, Muthu, is one. Okay, we have 1,680 and 1,680. They are the same numbers, guys. This one is, as promised, uh, pretty has some fairly complex numbers. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to draw the area model. We're looking at 527 times 36. So all great area models start with a fabulous rectangle. And we're going to decompose... 500 into 500, we're going to decompose it into its place values. 500 plus 20 plus 7. 
500 plus 20 plus 7 equals 527. We're going to decompose it into each of its place values. 36 is going to be decomposed into 30 plus 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and label our place value, our area model. Um, the first number is going to take up the width of the area model. So we are just going to go and assign each of our place values from 527 or our decomposition of 527 uh, and assign each of those numbers to a column. So we have 500 um, essentially plus 20 plus 7. Now we are going to break down our rows into two rows because we're breaking down 30 and 6 into two place values. Here's what is so important you guys. We have to put the highest place value at the bottom and the lowest place value at the top. Same here. Well, it's not same here. It's kind of opposite here. When we're labeling the width of our area model, we have to start with our highest place value and go down to our lowest place value. When we're labeling our rows, our highest place value, tens, is going to start at the bottom and then we will go up from there. We have to set it up this way, you guys, so that our partial products uh, match up with our partial products um, in our standard al algorithm. So let's go ahead and write the expressions. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six expressions now uh, because we're handling kind of a more complicated numbers here. So let's look at the expression for this first box. So this first row, actually, we're going to multiply six by 500 and then six by 20 here and then six by seven here. So let's go ahead and label our expressions. We have six times 500. Okay, so now we're still in the first row, so we're going to multiply 6, but now by 20. 6 times 20. And then our final column, we're going to multiply still by 6, but here we're going to multiply 6 by 7. Okay, so that's our first column. Let's look at our second column. I'm sorry, that's our first row, excuse me. Now let's look at our second row. In our second row, we're going to be multiplying by 30. And our first rectangle, we're going to multiply 30 by what, who is the ruler of this column? 500. Okay. Second row, second column, we're looking at 30 still, but now we're going to multiply 30 by, who's the boss of this column? 20. Final rectangle, we're still multiplying 30 through, but this time we're going to multiply 30 by 7. Okay, so now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 expressions. Now we're going to evaluate each of our 6 expressions. So I'm just writing equal in a blank. I might run out of room. Equal in a blank. Equal in a blank. Now let's go through and that blank, blank is is uh, slanted. I'm not meaning for them to be fraction bars. So let's go through and evaluate here. 6 times 5 I know is 30, but that's not a 5. It's a 500, which means that we are bringing 1, 2 zeros down to the party. So 6 times 500 is 3,000. Let's look at 6 times 20. Well, I know 6 times 2 is 12, plus bringing 1 zero down to the party. And then we're looking at 6 times 7, 42. Okay, great. Let's go to our second row. So here, actually, I like to circle the partial products so they're very clear. So there's our three partial products from our first row. Now we're going to go down to our second row and evaluate these expressions. Let's look at 3 times 5. Well, 3 times 5 is 15, but that's not 3 times 5. It's 30 times 500, which means we have 1, 2, 3 zeros coming to the party because we see 1, two, three zeros in our expression. Next, three times two, six. But that's not three times two, it's 30 times 20, which means that the product is not six, it's a 600 because we're bringing one, two zeros to the party. Finally here, our final rectangle, we're looking at 30 times seven. Well, I know three times seven is 21, but that's not a three, it's a 30. 
30 times 7 is 210. Okay, so now we have three partial products on the first row, and we have three partial products in the second row. We need to add up these three partial products in each of our rows to um, find another partial product per row. And you can probably glance horizontally and add these in your head. If that's not happening for you today, you can go ahead and line up these three partial products and just add them using the traditional algorithm for adding. So we have 3,000 plus 120 plus 42. Do you guys notice how well my place values are aligned? So I'm adding my ones with my ones and my tens with my tens and my hundreds and my thousands. So zero plus zero plus two is two. Zero plus two plus four is six. Zero plus one is one. And then we have our three. So the partial product for our first row is 3,162. Now let's look at our partial product for our second row. Second row, we're looking at a 15,000 plus 600. Again, we're adding together these three partial products to have a, to figure out a, um, another partial product for the row. Um, so we have 15,000 plus 600 plus 210. Okay, so we have zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero plus one is one. Zero plus six plus two, thank you, Katie, is eight. Five plus nothing is five. And then we have our one. So partial product for our second row, my friends, is 15,810. Wow, okay. So now let's go ahead and work on the standard algorithm. And our goal is for our partial products in our standard algorithm uh, to match with our partial products in our area model. So do you guys see what I mean when I was telling, warning you today in class that our numbers are going to become more complex, which is going to result in more work? Please take your time. Rushing through this, you will never be successful. Take your time, be thoughtful, make your work clear. Uh, so let's look at 6 times 7. 6 times 7 is 42. I'm going to bring my 4 over. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 4 is 16. Bring my 1 over. I'm going to cross out my 4 because I've used it, and that is going to help me keep track of what's going on here. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 1 is 31. I'm going to cross out my 1 because I've used it. And now I'm going to ask myself, is this partial product the same as this partial product? Happy time. Beautiful. Now we are going to go to our second row and we are going to multiply this 3, I mean 30, into our 7, our 2, and our 5. So what is 3 times 7? 3 times 7 is... 21. But this is not a 3, right, Victoria? It is a 30. It's in the tens place value. 30 times 7 is 210. So let's go ahead and put down our 0 and our 1, and we're going to bring our 2 up. Because 3, 30 times 7 is 210. So I have a 2 a one and a zero. Do you guys see why I crossed out those numbers? Because we're going to be working with a lot of um, <laughs> different numbers up here and it's important to keep track what we've used, what we haven't used. Okay, so I did three times seven, I mean 30 times seven. Now we're going to look at three times two. Well, three times two is six plus two is eight. But as you guys are probably thinking, this isn't a three, it's actually a 30. And that's not a two, it's actually a 20. Because we established our place value right here, our 8 is in the right place value. Because what we're essentially looking at here, you guys, is 30 right here times 20 right above, which is, um, which is 600. And then, but we added the 2, so it's actually not 600, it's 800. My point being that this 8 is in the proper place value. Okay, so we've done 3 times 7, or 30 times 7. We've done 30 times 20. Now we need to look at 30 times 5. Right now, let's just think about 3 times 5, which is 15. 
I know I'm interfering with that partial product. And please understand, so we have 30 times 500, which is equal to 15,000. And by gosh, I'm just going to rewrite, I'm just going to rewrite these partial products right over here because we're getting crowded. We have 3,162 and we have 15,810. 15 is in the proper place value because we established this um, very early on and now everything is a is exactly where it should be. So that is so exciting. Um, we need to ask ourselves, is this partial product the same as this? Yes, it is. Happy time. Final um, piece to this problem is we have to add up our partial products to find our final product. So let's go for it. We have two plus zero is two. Six plus one is seven. One plus eight is nine. Three plus five is eight. And then we have our one. So our final product to this beastly problem is 18,972. So darn exciting. Um, I need to tell you guys a secret word uh, for today. It's giant leaf. Giant leaf. We are proud owners of a gorgeous bouquet full of giant leaves as big as your head. Uh, so I think that would be a perfect secret word for us today. I uh, can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Keep up the great work.